Are you serious? <clears throat> Are you serious, guys? Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Sorry. Are you serious? <clears throat> Are you serious, guys? Get a cup of coffee. I-95. Get a cup of coffee and just calm down, Philadelphia. What in the world's going on here, guys? With Eight hours ago. Today is June 11th, 2023 which on record is Jacob Israel's 52nd birthday. With this, this truck semi-trailer explosion uh, in Philadelphia and the damage it's done to I-95 is insane. Let me put a shout out. Right let's not go to the shout out, but let's do go to, here's where, was collapsed at. On the map, to line it up, it's, it's the same, it's right here. You see the cross path here? So this is northbound going that way. And then southbound is this way towards Center City. Completed an aerial view of the site and received a briefing from law enforcement, first responders, and transportation experts on the ground together with Mayor Kenny. As has been reported, the northbound side of I-95 has completely collapsed, and the southbound side is not structurally sound to carry any traffic over it. In response, PennDOT, the city of Philadelphia, and SEPTA, under leadership of Leslie Richards, who joins us today, have created detours and are working on further alternative methods to ensure folks can safely get to where they need to go. We're also looking at interim solutions to connect both sides of I-95 to get traffic through the area. With regards to the complete rebuild of I-95 roadway, we expect that to take some number of months. Uh tanker in Philadelphia. This explosion uh, really is weird. I mean, um, first of all, what in the world caused this to explode like that? So I'm not just talking to Satan, then I'm talking to you too. 11 days ago. But I want you to know, I'm driving along Cotman. Cotman Ave through 73, exit 30, going northbound. When I just flipped this around, this is what I was showing you. The opposite direction. Right here. And my computer just loves getting stuck. Just holding me up with everything at any possible time it can. So northbound. Is coming in this direction. And then here's the here's the damage. Right when it says. Cotman exit. 30, you should see that sign somewhere around here going in the opposite direction. Route 30. Route 30. Route 30. That I'm aware of at least the possibility of, I'm just talking to myself and um, it's, I'm in the matrix, right? And right. Coming up 
is going to be this sign on the left hand side that you see. The other people are too and they don't know it, but maybe they're not attached to me. And it's just a program that it makes it seem like all these people are connected. There I am on that side of the road. Now I'm going to go, I go back and say, well, what was it that I was saying as I was crossing over this point? And there's another video uploading. I thought I uploaded it on Friday, but I uploaded I only uploaded positive and positive is really part two because here this is just a straight Truman scene it's right down the street from my house part one ended the reason why I stopped is because this car on the left was already backing out up 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 yonder up here so I was like all right let me wait for him to come out then just like the Truman show because they were all waiting for me to pull up I stopped and they all backed out so for a moment just picture this car was back here between this one and the ones that are coming down the line. I stopped and then five seconds later, this scene started. So I waited. synchronized don't you agree right. that's not the actual point I was making I'm uploading the second part the first part of it which is me driving home over here Friday heading home driving right over the exit so this portion of the exit here going down the collapse is right there there's the collapse right there so on the other side you'll see you'll see this car coming through. The grip Everything from this family stop. is breathtaking. No matter your industry, Ranger's here for you with professional grade school. We're on 95 right now. Now, when he went over it, that was quite a bump. I don't ever remember doing a bump like that. That bridge is about to collapse. Look at that, look at that dip. It's already cracked. So there it is, collapsed. What was I saying when I was driving over that? Let me just see. So this was 11 days ago. And again, the other video is uploaded. It'll take, it'll take a while. I'll show the clip as of uh, two days ago. Connected because, well, if 
I talk to this person, that person talks to that person, they must know the other person. If I go drive here and see that person, it makes it seem like all these people are connected because, well, if I talk to this person, that person talks to that person, they must know the other person. If I go drive here. As I'm driving here, it's Route 30, I mean, uh, Exit 30. This would be the collapse. Yeah, first. Well, you definitely know them. So everything seems real. It, se it sounds insane to even think that it isn't real. But he what isn't real? But maybe they're not a, a town. It, see, it sounds insane to even think that. Here's the line right here. There's the collapse. There's the off pass. The waste masters of the universe. Here it is. Blue Rock. There's the prison, I believe. We expect it to take that time, and we will have that specific timeline set forth once the engineers and PennDOT have completed their review. To expedite this process and to cut through the red tape, tomorrow morning I plan to issue a disaster declaration, allowing the Commonwealth to immediately draw down federal funds and move quickly to repair and reconstruct this roadway. I've spoken directly to Secretary Pete Buttigieg of the United States Department of Transportation, along with Senator Casey, Congressman Boyle, uh, and other federal officials. My chief of staff has spoken directly to White House officials. All of our federal partners have pledged a complete and total support and assistance as we create alternative routes and as we rebuild I-95. As I drove right over it as of Friday and as of 11 days ago, I actually drove over something that in the future became destroyed. isn't real. Well, if I talk to this person, that person talks to that person, they must know the other person. If I go drive here and see that person, well, they definitely know them. So everything seems real. It, se it sounds insane to even think that it isn't real. Would you do anything different? Wait a minute. So, I'm being 
Stop. Just take a look at that. And God's just allowing it to happen. The wildfire? Because he created the darkness and then formed the light out of the dark. I don't know if it's any connection or not to 95 collapsing. However, you do have smoke on the Canadian side. And then there's a highway or a roadway. First, it's it's the fire, smoke, smoking us out from Canada. Uh, Philadelphia, it's a major thing that the roadway was destroyed, blown up, uh, collapsed. However, whatever happened, it was on fire and somehow fire melted the steel and just collapsed it like 9-11 did. That's how strong it was. Let me get to what I wanted to get to today. So the, wild, uh, the wildfires in Canada. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, live from uh, San Diego, California. Got in very late or early. Which one do you want to say? 5.30 in the morning. Arrival here in San Diego. Ugh. Long flights, bad connections. You give directions on how to go to heaven, you better have your game down. You put a person in an airplane and give him coordinates from California to Hawaii, if he's off one degree, He'll die. Two days ago, June 8th. Tell them they want a ticket for the webinar. Tell One them they want the ago. bundle. Today's June 8th, 2023. 8.30 p.m. And Paul Begley is going from, as of one day ago, June 7th, he's going from San Diego, which is in California, to Hawaii. You want it all. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss what's going on in San Diego uh, Friday night or what's going to be going on live in Honolulu, Hawaii the following Friday night, June 16th. You want it all. So what I'm saying in this video is when it pertains to Jacob Israel and something going on with Paul Begley where it just seems like it's like if something happens on, on Jacob Israel's birthday, I'm trying to find the clip where I said it, something happens like to him or, you know, devastation that starts a five month period on his birthday. At the moment, this collapse took place six o'clock, 620 in the morning on Jake Israel's birthday. I'm just saying, Jacob was saying, he's not gonna sell you out or anything. It's not like you're cut from the same cloth or have the same beliefs or it's not like you could possibly be the same person behind everything, but it's a Knights Templar, Masonic, Freemason. And how funny would that be? Paul Begley and me in the same channel. That'd be pretty funny, right? You want it all. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss what's going on in San Diego uh, Friday night or what's going to be going Judy. on live in Honolulu, Hawaii the following Friday night. person in an airplane and give him coordinates from California to Hawaii, if he's off one degree, he'll die. If Paul Bagley gets into an airplane accident on his way to Hawaii from uh, from San, from California, or something happens with Jacob Israel on his birthday, June 11th. Good afternoon, I'm Governor Josh Shapiro, and this morning, according to first responders, Some two hours ago, June 11th. Good afternoon, I'm Governor Josh Shapiro, and this morning, according to first responders here in Philadelphia and the Pennsylvania State Police, at approximately 6.20 a.m., a vehicle fire underneath I-95 behind me here caused a portion of the highway above to collapse. We're on 95 right now. I'm going to drive here and see that person. 
but he definitely know them. So everything seems real. At least one vehicle is still trapped underneath the collapsed roadway. Preliminary reports indicate that a commercial truck carrying a petroleum based product was the source of the fire. We're still. Fire on 95. So let's examine this for one second. Let's go. Let's, let's go off the exit. So here's the exit. Route 30. Heading down here. Apparently a vehicle got off of the north, going north, like towards heaven. Trucks entering highway. And what they're saying is, here's what they're saying. This collapsed because of a fire. <laughs> I mean, whatever, just, right? Fire beams, it's something, it just reminds me of the 9-11 story. Fire beam collapsed. Uh, that tremendously in the middle Still working to identify any individual or individuals who may have been caught in the fire and the collapse. I was first briefed on this situation early this morning by my chief of staff, Dana Fritz, then by Pennsylvania Secretary of Transportation, Mike Carroll, who you'll hear from in a moment, along with Pennsylvania State Police Commissioner, Christopher Paris, and the Pima Director, Randy Padfield. All three join me here today and we've received regular updates throughout the day. Since the crash occurred this morning, the state police have been on the scene, assisting the Philadelphia police under the leadership of Commissioner Outlaw in diverting traffic off of I-95. Pima has been on site, coordinating the response efforts with our local and our federal partners. Since this morning, PennDOT personnel and Secretary Carroll himself have been on site inspecting the roadway. Finally, DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection, under the leadership of Acting Secretary Nagren, has been coordinating with the United States Coast Guard and the Philadelphia Water Department to conduct environmental assessments. Hmm. Isn't it hard for steel and concrete to catch on fire? While this is still very much an active scene, I just completed an aerial view of the site and received a briefing from law enforcement, first responders, and transportation experts on the ground together with Mayor Kenny. As has been reported, the northbound side of I-95 has completely collapsed, and the southbound side is not structurally sound to carry any traffic over it. In response, PennDOT, the city of Philadelphia, collapsed. As has been reported, the northbound side of I-95 has completely collapsed. The bound side is not structurally sound to carry any traffic over it. In response, PennDOT, the city of Philadelphia, and SEPTA under leadership of Leslie Richards, who joins us today, have created detours and are working on further alternative methods to ensure folks can safely get to where they need to go. We're also looking at interim solutions to connect both sides of I-95 to get traffic through the area. With regards to the complete rebuild of I-95 roadway, we expect that to take some number of months. We expect it to take that time, and we will have that specific timeline set forth once the engineers in PennDOT have completed their review. To expedite this process and to cut through the red tape tomorrow morning. There you go. All right, so... Let's look at the the collapse is right there. There's the split. So you see the beams are still there. The beams are still there. What on earth could cause 
you back up a little bit. What on earth could cause this beam right here, along with all the other ones, to go like this? Morning. I plan to issue a disaster declaration, allowing the Commonwealth to immediately draw down federal funds and move quickly to repair and reconstruct this roadway. I've spoken directly. Completely separated. Right there. Just dropped down. Separated, bent, ice beam, steel beams. It's not even like it blew up. It just, it just uh, came out. So if I didn't know any better, not that I am an expert on explosions or anything, no, but for this entire, how many beams are there? What do we got? We got one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen beams. If I didn't know any better, I would say something had to have been there there had to have been some type of a structural damage right down here along the lines of every single beam. in order for this to collapse. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. Not even 14 beams, because that's only halfway. It's more like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beams and then completely separated from this portion right here, which is all these steel beams running across. Every one of these, all seven of them, collapsed. So that's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if you notice, that seventh beam is untouched. This one right here. Wow, so what is it? What could possibly do that? They're saying a truck was underneath there? It was on fire? How was it on fire? Did it, it's only an underpass. Nobody actually parks here. So this nobody would be parking underneath. They would be driving through. So the, the truck or whatever would have to be driving through. It had petroleum on there? What is that, jelly? What is it? How is that dangerous? And the fire explosion, well, I mean, all the smoke is mainly over here. But it's collapsed down there. So underneath, it would have to, had to have been severed. All seven beams, roughly from, from here to here, and then straight down the middle. Because it, isn't it unusual? that these beams all collapsed, half of the beams, but the south side didn't. Only the north side, like the king of the north and the king of the south, southbound of 95. North is this way, and that's 
that's that's where it collapsed at. So south is still up, but this is the this is it right here. It's almost like it's already. I mean, I understand it's a bridge, but man, it's already severed to just split whenever it feels like it, right? Let me check the north, the south side. Oh, wait a minute. No, that was the south side. Here, north side. Let's, let's just go right where it's at. Yeah, I mean, it's a bridge. It's supposed to be separated. But somewhere right around here, in this section right here would be the damage. This is where this is where it split and it collapsed. Do you see the the uh, angel forty nine ninety nine tune up? Angel forty nine ninety nine tune up when it's showing this portion and so over here you see it you see the angel to the left hand side but now it's ninety eight definitely know them so everything seems real it see it sounds insane to even think that it $98 heating system, 80 Angel. $49? Mm -mm, that's not what it says. How old is this Google? I wonder, is there a way to find out the image time? I don't know if there's a way to find out what. Yeah, look. Look at this. I think there's some kind of a glitch down here to imagery is from 2023 2023 you're trying to tell me that this Tune up in one year went from forty nine ninety nine to ninety eight dollars isn't real, and it doesn't say a tune up. But you definitely know them, so everything seems real. It see it sounds insane to even think that it isn't. Uh, well, maybe they just changed the sign. The heating system fully installed. Okay, $98. Not that's really important, just making sure that I know I'm at the right place and I crossed over the right path. And that that is the dark spot right there, exactly when I crossed over. And what was I saying at the time about things being real and isn't real? Well, let's just listen to the story. Directly to Secretary Pete Buttigieg of the United States Department of Transportation, along with Senator Casey, Congressman Boyle, uh, and other federal officials. My chief of staff has spoken directly to White House officials. All of our federal partners have pledged a complete and total support and assistance as we create alternative routes and as we rebuild I-95. Secretary Buttigieg has assured me that there will be absolutely no delay in getting federal funds deployed to quickly help us rebuild this critical artery. I-95, of course, is a roadway that supports our economy and plays an important role in folks' everyday lives. Our administration, together with the Kennedy administration and all of our partners, are all hands on deck to repair this safely, safely and as efficiently as possible. ODM, for any questions that you may have. Mayor Kennedy? Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank, thank you all for joining us for this update. As, as was just discussed uh, this morning, a large fire under I-95 near the Cotman Avenue exit caused a portion of the highway to collapse. Right now, the fire is under control. Both city and state agencies are responding to address impacts to residents in the area and travelers affected by road closures and detours. At this time, we are advising residents to please avoid the area and plan for alternative routes of travel. 
In addition to road closures, we expect delays of trash collection and set the bus routes in the area. And I encourage folks right to now. look at those uh, opportunities uh, and yeah, information. This, uh, the challenges this, will be real uh, when it comes to traffic movements in the city. Tank as a result of this, uh, in incident, Philadelphia, uh, this explosion uh, really uh, is that, uh, weird. Recognizes I mean, the challenges, uh, of course. So I will now turn it over to Leslie Richard from Chester for commentary related to transit movements in the, in the city. To explode like that. So I, I... Um, thank you, Secretary Carroll. Um, weird. I mean, um, first of all, what in the world caused this? to explode like that. So I, I'm sitting here looking at the uh, the situation. I was watching just a few moments ago, but the multiple lanes of Interstate I-95 northbound in Philadelphia has collapsed after a tanker truck fire erupted underneath the overpass. What's that about? The fire broke out around 6 a.m. this morning uh, underneath I-95 near the Cotman Avenue exit. Thing happens with Jacob Israel on his birthday, June 11th, 2023, because already where he lives seemed to have been the most horrendously hit from the wildfires uh, with put with the air pollution in Long Island. So it, it seems like somebody's trying to attack a So today is 6 8, three more days, 6 11, 2023. Before anything happens like this, just in case, then you would know why it happened. So what's Let's that about? Told you. The fire broke out around 6 a.m. this morning uh, underneath I 95 near the Cotman Avenue exit in the Tacone section of the city of Philadelphia. Now, and, uh, video from the chopper. I'm in the matrix, right? And the other people are too, and they don't know it. But maybe they're not attached to me. And it's just a program that it makes it seem like all of these people are connected because. In the morning, I talk to uh, underneath I 95 near the Cotman Avenue exit. Yellow. I go drive here and see that person. But they definitely came to myself. But maybe they're not. And, it, and it's just a program that it makes it seem like all these people are. Underneath I-95 near the Cotman Avenue exit in the Tacone section of the city of Philadelphia. Now, video from the Chopper, uh, Chopper 6 News there this morning showed that the northbound lanes of the highway were reduced to rubble. Unbelievable. The southbound lanes are so compromised, and so they had to shut everything down. So basically, I-95 is shut completely down in Philadelphia. Can you imagine what the traffic that's going to cause tomorrow morning? There has been no word on yeah. any injuries or any other vehicles involved. Yeah, it's going to cause inconvenience for myself because I seem to get better gas mileage when I leave early in the morning and go to 95. But at the moment, the southbound wasn't collapsed, but they're saying it's unstructurally sound because the southbound is easier to come to coming this way. Going this way, no matter what time I leave, it's always jam-packed. So, you know, it's not even really a big deal. I can just take another route. But, man, people are going to, it's going to be sick. It's going to be so sickening. All this, this back street is going to be packed. It's going to just be non-stop cars just driving, 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 and, and just going to the next on ramp, it going down here, street road. They're gonna have to keep going and going, and maybe they can get on here somewhere around. Uh, there you go, right? They can go. They're all gonna get on this street, then they're gonna go down here, cross over, and then you can get back on here. Yeah, Academy.
It's just a small little nightmare starting out right now. And I'm just wondering, is there some kind of, well, what's the landscape look like? You can see anything unusual like a shark. That looks like a shark, doesn't it? The teeth and the eye. Your teeth here. The shark coming up. This eyeball right here. Doesn't look like anything's even here either. I don't know how. Well, it says 2023. Was there anything there when I was driving by? I couldn't tell. There's that building. Marjam. Marjam, the next building. The exit is right there. Let's see what's happening here. Marjam building. It's I'm in the matrix, right? Yes. And the other people are too, and they don't know it. But maybe they're not attached to me. And it's just a program that... Program. Margin coming up. It makes it seem like all these people are connected because, well, if I talk to this person, that person talks to that person. They must know the other person. Exit. If I go drive here and see that person. Here's the exit right here. So far when they took that picture, there was no building. But they definitely know them. So everything seems real. It, se it sounds insane to huh. even think that it isn't real. No, it looks like it's, it looks like it's packed over here with stuff. As of here, there's nothing there. I don't understand how they can be. They couldn't have made that. They couldn't have possibly built all that in a, just this year. Because this is an empty lot. Let's see if there's anything here. No? Doesn't look like it. But again, I may just be talking to Satan, and uh, and the Father hears my words, and it's just between us. It sure is unusual how there's nothing there, but yet... It looks like it's always been there when I drove by. Uh, this is an emergency that has created a tremendous uh, challenge for our transportation net network. We're evaluating all options to enhance service for those who are impacted. We're close to finalizing details of an immediate service plan for the next 24 to 48 hours. Then we'll continue to adjust with what we are seeing. Here's some adjustments that we have finalized for tomorrow morning. We're at a ridership, and we hope people will consider all the options that we have available for them. We are all going to need some extra patience in the coming days. Please work with us as we work through this, especially tomorrow morning. We ask employers to be as flexible as they can with their workforces. It's going to take longer than normal. So that's, that's what's all built there. All that. Storage units, I guess. Get to work tomorrow. Please continue to check our website, septa.org, and our Twitter account, which will be updated on a regular basis. We're also opening up our customer service call center early tomorrow morning, and representatives will be available by phone starting at 6 a.m. You can call 215-580-7800, and we're here to help. Thank you so much, and thanks, Governor Shapiro, for being here. Thank you. I hope it's clear to everyone here that every agency, local, state, and federal, are working together to address this. I also want to thank several of our elected officials who are here with us from City Council, as well as from the State Assembly. With that, while this is obviously a fluid situation, we'll do our best to answer any questions that you have. Governor, based on what you see in your briefing, is there anything that indicates this could have been any conversation with the Secretary of Education? Is there a possible chance that would be able to damage this potential impact in the next five 
this is an ongoing investigation, so I'm not going to comment on the first part of your question. On the second part of your question, the Secretary of Transportation, people to judge, has made it clear that whatever resources would be needed to rebuild I-95 and to do so in a safe and expeditious manner would be provided to us. From what you saw flying over the highway, just how different the quality of that, like, just seeing the scene of that on that highway and the potential that yeah. has been a different day of the Just, I mean, remarkable devastation. And I found myself, you know, thanking the Lord that uh, no motorists who were on, 95, on I-95 um, were injured or died. Uh, just a, a remarkably devastating sight, um, one that our first responders, law enforcement, uh, and others um, contained very, very quickly. They got people out of harm's way. And now, uh, under leadership of Secretary Carroll and others, um, the hard work of uh, clearing the site, rebuilding it, will be underway, and we're going to move as quickly as possible. Graham, that it makes it seem like all these people are connected because... Well, if I talk to this person, that person talks to that person, they must know the other person. If I go drive here and see that person, well, they definitely know them. So everything seems real. It, se it sounds insane. The thing uh, isn't real. But again, I may just be talking to Satan and... Uh, What in the world happened to this trucker, this tanker, and what was in this tank that it burned so hot that it could collapse an interstate? <laughs> Crews are working to get the fire under control. It's not yet known what was inside the tanker truck or why it caught fire. Something happens with Jacob Israel on his birthday, June 11th. 2023 because already where he lives seemed to have been the most horrendously hit from the wildfires uh, with, with the smoke, smoke with the air pollution in Long Island so it, it seems like somebody's trying to attack him or something explosions could be heard in the area as fumes seeped into manholes oh, manholes huh Causing explosions in manholes. What so, in the manholes? What in the world was this stuff? Just uh, really loud explosions, like they're getting a lot like gunshots, but even uh, even stronger. Uh, so, like when, say, for instance, you're you're down here, and you hear all you hear about seven. I'd say maybe. It probably heard about one, two, three, four, five, six. They probably heard about seven explosions that sounded like, uh, you know, worse, worse than gunfire, right, Paul? Is that what you're saying? Oh, uh, wait. So this was... Hey, last time I either drove by something or pointed my hat yesterday finger and something. Today's the 21st of October, 2019. Harold Camping's World. October 20th. Home Depot. And then the next day, same night actually. Now, it's on... The same night, Home Depot is badly damaged. Damage to some Garland neighborhoods as well. This is near Shiloh Road, north of LBJ Freeway. There are trees down, many homes with roof damage. Garland police say they have no reports of any serious injuries, however. And a tornado, pretty clearly, I don't think we need to say may have, a tornado hit Northeast Dallas last night. Uh, yeah, we've seen a video, yeah. Certain, yeah. yeah. Brandon Todd is live in the Lake Highlands neighborhood where a Home Depot is so low. Damage. Yeah, good morning, guys. Uh, the damage here in this area is evident before you ever get to this Home Depot. You can see this entire section here around Forest and Central is dark. Everywhere I look, it's dark. Power is off to everything here. Uh, said some of the, said Brian Kelly, almost like M80s, little fireworks. Everyone is being asked to avoid the scene. It smells like burning plastic. Fumes in your face. Um, Officials say that the extent of the damage means that this is a situation that will impact the region for a long time to come. Remember, I've been telling you, they're going to, I don't know what happened here. This could be a total accident for all I know. I have no clue. But 
the dangers are if the infrastructure can be taken down quickly, it doesn't take a lot. You don't have to drop a nuke. You could just start doing things like explosions, taking down interstates, shoot, uh, sh you know, shutting down uh, power grids, substations, uh, chemicals dumped into the waters. If, I mean, there's so if, many different ways the that goes, terrorists, that uh, that's right, terrorists, and the T word, could actually be involved. Now, I'm not saying that this is AI what happened here. I have no idea. The guy may have crashed and fell asleep. He was given little treats every time that it learned, every time it did something right. He was Days ago, that's an old picture. I think that was like now over a week ago. Um, and the other one. Look at this little tropical baby. Oh, sir. Extra taste. Nobody talks like that besides a male to female. Who's that? Lucas King? Days ago, that's an old picture. I think that was like now over a week ago. Oh, Denise loves Lord, my two cents, Paul Barry. Everybody here and all. I thought this whole show was going to be a real bummer. I really did. I mean, let's just take a look at the thumbnail, huh? Let's take a look at something for a second, huh? <laughs> Truth itching. No, it's in 3D. Sacrifice. Jacob Israel. Denise, I have missed you too, Denise. This was information. This was June 10th, 826 p.m. during his live stream. And then today, my, my wife's name is Denise, and we were sitting at Table 101 down at Wildwood this weekend on Saturday, yesterday, June 10th. We were down at the shore. Today's June 11th, Sunday, and this is and today explosion happened. But again, let's pull this up. Hello, everybody. Hello, Denise loves Lord. My <laughs> two cents, Paul Barry. Everybody here and already. Right, right, right. Hey, Denise, I am missed you too. That was the day before. Book it. And today at 7 11, I took a screenshot of the video that I recorded on June 9th, 2023, on Friday, two days before the B495 collapsed, 5 44 p.m. So I'm just wondering what I was talking about the last time that I drove by uh, the uh, the exact spot that collapsed. And then here's Jacob's video. So at 151, I took a screenshot at 17 hours ago. Jacob's video is 101. 17 hours ago. On June 10th, which was a day before, at 12... 12.25 p.m. So again, at 1.51, I'm taking a screenshot. 1.51, I'm taking a screenshot. 17 hours ago at 1.51, 101, and 12.25, June 10th, is a day and a, some change ago. Me and my wife, me and my wife Denise, are sitting at We're sitting at room uh, table 101. Because June 11th, 1225 p.m. would be 24 hours at 152 taking a screenshot. June 10th. And then same time, 151 taking a screenshot 17 hours ago. 
which means this happened first, June 10th, 2023. Me and my wife, Denise, sitting down at the boardwalk, Wildwood, at table, one, table 101. And then Jacob, table 101. It seems like it's New York versus Philly. The Sodom and Gomorrah. The two cities, two twins, the, the one of them's the William Penn representing the other one is New York, the arm, arm Armageddon in New York, Long Island, Jacobs in Long Island in New York. It seemed like New York was the most smoked out from the New York became a hellscape as predicted. And now on Jacob's birthday, as I'm saying, I don't know, I just feel like something's going to take place on Jacob's birthday. So what do I, something's going to take place on Jacob's birthday that's going to be in the news that everybody's going to hear about. I mean, uh, or in the, yeah, because if something happened to Jacob, you would hear about it. But instead, it's Philadelphia with a bridge collapsed, which is starting the terrorist um, rumors to start to lead more down towards Philly because there was already a sinkhole in front of Israel flag in U2. Stephen Noon led me in that direction to go check out that sinkhole. Now this is another, this is a different type of sinkhole. This is a crushing blow for commute to get to Center City to get to work. Now Everybody trying to get to work is going to have more problems because of it. So, we're there, table 101, me and my wife, Denise. Hello, Denise loves Lord, my two cents, Paul Berry, everybody here, and already, thank you, so many of you, have belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. All meaning that he will not finish his term, he would just... And we would just the day before. be biding our time. The beast who once was. Uh, I just honestly cannot believe that you are believing this beast from the pit antichrist. And look at that endorsement. I can't believe that people are actually believing. And now is not. The is horse- an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. The ten horns you saw are the ten kings. They've yet. I rebuke you. Robbie, Henry, Tease. I rebuke you. Yet to receive Robin, a kingdom. He doesn't have a whole lot of common sense. But who, you for know, one hour, will Robin receive authority as kings along with the beast? They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. They will wage war against the lamb. And they have, by the way. Believe that you are believing this beast from the pit antichrist. And look at that endorsement. I can't believe that people are actually believing the horse shit that comes out of this antichrist's mouth. Robin's new name that I will put upon him. Oh, Henry, how thou art fallen from heaven. <laughs> this is why I call him. You want to see why I call him reprobate Rob and Bozo? All right? Because he's, bro- he's Bozo. Bozo the clown. All right? But I call him reprobate Rob now. He he he, he made fun of me calling him Robin. Robin, Robin. And we'll give their but power to the beast. And we'll wage war we'll against the lamb. Reprobate Rob. They have, by the way. Okay? I'll show you why. I'll show you why I'm calling him Reprobate Rob. Okay? Check Look here. here. Look here. <laughs> All right? Check here. Hocus pocus. Reprobate Rob. I like, the, I like when you look at the top part. God is on earth. Prince Harry. God is on earth, fire, serpent, queen, goddess, the god of heaven, reprobate, rob, equals. 
Reprobate Rob. Lord over. Well, wait. What about Lord over God? Just followed a cursor. It's not my cursor. It's Steve's. Reprobate Rob. Lord over. Well, what about Lord over God? I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it to you people. 135. Wow. 135. The Lamb will triumph over them because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Reprobate Rob. Reprobate Rob. They will wage war Lord against the Lamb. And they have, by the way. 